Hey guys, what is up? What's going on? It's your girl Ashley. Welcome back to the channel. So today's video, it's going to be pretty, pretty cool, at least to me. I originally saw Jamie Page Beauty do this over on her channel where she kind of did like a get ready with me using a bunch of her favorite products. Today, I'm going to be doing a full face of favorites. Now, I already know what you're thinking. Like, how is it even humanly possible for this girl to have a full face of favorites? Well, I can explain that. I haven't actually done a favorites video in well over two years on my channel so I do have a lot of products that I constantly gravitate towards whenever I'm doing my makeup and you guys have seen those products on this channel here and there and other products that you may have not seen I use interchangeably when I'm not filming on my channel so hopefully you guys enjoy this video now if you guys are new to my channel trust me when I tell you you're gonna want to press that subscribe button and also click that bell so that you guys are notified anytime I upload a new video which is three times a week every single week Anyways, I hope you guys really enjoyed this video and without further ado, let's go ahead and get into it. What is up you guys? Today I'm going to be talking about some of my favorite products. I'm going to be getting ready as I use my favorite products. I kind of have like a full face, which I know is surprising to some of you guys. Like how does she have a full face of favorites? But in my defense, I haven't filmed a favorites video in well over two years. So I've had like that much time to really experiment with products and figure out which ones I love. These are a bunch of my go-to products that I always grab whenever I'm doing my makeup. So we are going to start off with the base. First and foremost, you guys know this. This is no surprise. This is my Smashbox Photo Finish Primerizer. It is a primer and moisturizer in one. You guys know what's crazy is that while this is my favorite product, I didn't realize how much it was until recently. 42 dollars which I think is crazy but I feel like the price point is relatively high because it does two in one it's like going to prime your skin but it's also going to moisturize it at the same time and honestly I just really really love the way this feels on the skin and I feel like it really helps my foundation last longer throughout the day once you have it worked into the skin, you'll also notice that it starts to get somewhat tacky, which is really, really good because that means my foundation is going to stick to it and last all day long. So that is definitely one of my top favorites. The next one I'm going to use is this. This is the Neo Elixir, which is a weightless beauty oil by Kevin Aquan. Do you guys see this? Like I am almost out. You guys know those favorites videos where you see the product and it looks brand spanking new. No shade, but I'm just saying. Why the fuck you lying? Like how is something your favorite product and it looks brand new? Um, so what I'm doing is I'm popping this bo booty. No, I ain't popping the booty. I'm popping this beauty oil onto my face directly over top of my moisturizer. And the reason I go in with my beauty oil second is because it's really going to lock in my moisturizer. And the beauty oil is known to be one of the only things that can fully penetrate moisturizers into the skin, which is why I do apply them in this order. Honestly, I want you guys to guess how long it takes me to film a YouTube video. Let me know in the comments down below. So while I wait for those products to fully penetrate into the skin, I'm gonna move on to my brows. There are four products I like to use whenever I do my brows, and I know that sounds like a lot, but I gotta make sure the brows are fleeky always, all day. So I like to go in with this guy. This is by e.l.f. This is a dual-ended product. It has a sweat-resistant mascara on one end, and then it also has a sweat-resistant clear brow gel on the other end. This is a trick that I learned from a friend of mine. Her name is Tanya from Kiss and Makeup here on YouTube, but pretty much what I've been doing ever since I saw her do this on me is I've been applying brow gel to my eyebrows before I fill them in and this is really just going to lay down the hairs just so that way they're all going in the same direction and I find that when I do this my brows just look a lot smoother and cleaner because they're laying all in one direction. And fun fact, I do live in Florida, so sweat resistant brow gel, I am here for it. Now you do want to wait for your brow gel to completely dry before moving on to filling them in. So grab a fan, air it out, and just wait. Now that I've given that brow product time to really dry down, I'm gonna move on to my actual brow product. I will be using this guy. This is the MAC Eyebrow Styler in the shade Spiked, which I do really, really like. Now what I like about it is that it matches my eyebrow hairs perfectly. It's not too ashy, but it's also not too warm. And I like the fact that it is a slim eyebrow pencil so I could easily just fill in my brows and it has that spoolie on the other end so I could really just comb and blend the product and I don't have to go in with a separate spoolie. So what I'm gonna do with this product is I'm just taking it and I'm drawing a line directly underneath my brow 
like so and then I do like to use a relatively light hand and when I get to the tail of my eyebrow I will just press down a little bit harder because typically I do like for my tail to be a little bit more defined. Once I have the bottom of my brow underlined, I am just gonna go in and do the same exact thing to the top. With the spoolie, I'm just gonna go ahead and brush it out so that way it's not as harsh. I know my eyebrow looks a little crazy, but once I have it completely filled in, I do like to go in with another product, and this product has recently become one of my favorites. It is literally growing on me, and it is the brand new Shape and Shade Brow Tint in the shade Spiked by MAC. And what I love most about it is the felt tip marker right here, because it allows me to create fine hair-like strokes towards the very front of my brow. So what I'll do is I'll take the felt tip liner, and I'll just draw small hair-like strokes right here, giving it more of a hair-like effect. Now that I have the general shape down for my brow, I'm gonna go in with my NARS Soft Matte Complete Concealer in the shade Creme Brulee on a Morphe M421. And I'm gonna use this to carve out directly underneath my eyebrow. Now that my brows are nice and filled in, I'm gonna go in with this fluffy brush right here. This just so happens to be by IT Cosmetics. And I'm gonna dip it into the Soft Matte Complete Concealer by NARS. And I'm gonna use this to prime my entire eyelid. Oh my God, this is like taking me all the way back. You guys know I would use this concealer to prime my eyelids so much. You guys know I ran out of the shade called Custard, so I stopped using it. But Creme Brulee works exact same. In fact, I have been liking to use a lighter base to prime my eyelid just because I feel like it really makes the eyeshadows pop and stand out. So I'm taking this all over the lid. So I went ahead and brought you guys in a little bit closer just so that way you guys can see what I'm going to be working on for the eyes. So I have two eyeshadow palettes that I wanted to share with you guys in this video just because one of them is relatively new and I didn't feel completely comfortable saying it's my favorite because I have been using her for just a few short weeks. One of my main favorites would definitely have to be the ABH Soft glam but I'm pretty sure you guys probably saw that one coming she gets a lot a lot of love like it's unreal how much I use this palette anytime I want to go for more of a dramatic or a neutral or a natural look I'll pick up this palette because it is so universal that you can literally create the most natural daytime look with it or you can amp it up and take it tonight so that's why I really, really love that palette. It's ABH, so these shadows are extremely buttery, creamy, blendable, buildable. Which reminds me, are you guys getting the Norvina palette? Do you want me to get the Norvina palette? Let me know. The purples in that palette look amazing. Another palette I've really been loving is the Urban Decay Born to Run eyeshadow palette. Like, just the color story in this palette is absolutely beautiful. I love that it has a mixture between your typical warm tones, but it also has those pops of colors in there, so that way you guys can create different looks. The formula of these eyeshadows are unlike anything I have seen from Urban Decay. They're extremely creamy, buildable, and blendable. I will be using this eyeshadow palette in today's video just because you guys have been wanting me to use this in a tutorial and I have honestly been reaching for it a lot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a Morphe M441 like this and I'm going to pick up the shade called Riff which is a soft brown color in the palette. And what I'm going to do for today's look is that I want to do something that's a little bit more natural and glowy versus something that's super dramatic. I've been doing so many dramatic looks recently, so I definitely want to change up the pace. So I'm gonna take this soft brown and I'm going to pack her right here towards the outer corner, like so, and I'm going to keep her underneath the crease. I'm really going to concentrate this color about halfway onto my eyelid, but I'm gonna focus the majority of this soft brown right here in the outer V. As you can see, I'm really just patting the color. I'm not swiping it or going in big circular motions just because I do want to put the majority of the product on my lid before I go in and start blending. I just get a little bit more of a better look when I do this technique. I also want to point out how incredibly beautiful this shadow looks on my lid. It doesn't look patchy or anything like that. So now that I have the majority of the color in place, I'm just going to take that same brush and I'm just going to go ahead and wiggle it back and forth into the crease bringing it inwards a little bit now I'm not going to take the shade all the way into the socket I am just going to keep it right here towards the outer part now I'm taking my brush and I'm going in big circular motions to really just buff out the
the edges. Now that we have that color blown out all over the lid, I am gonna dip out of the Born to Run palette by Urban Decay, and I'm gonna switch over to a Super Shock Shadow by ColourPop. This one is in the shade Fluffy. Let me just say, this is like my go-to bronze shade right here. She's extremely beautiful and foiled like Oh, I cannot get enough of this shade right here. Like, look how beautiful it looks just like on my finger right here. It looks wet. Like, it gives an illusion of a wet eyelid, but your eyes aren't really wet. So, I'm definitely living for it. So, I'm going to take my ring finger and I'm just going to dip my finger into the product. And I'm going to put it all over the lid. Then, I'm just going to do a little bit of a patting motion and apply it a little bit higher in my crease. I'm taking this color super high into my crease just because I do want to create the illusion of a wetter eye look. So once I have the color on, I am just using this brush to just kind of pat and buff out the edges so that way things aren't as harsh. Now I'm just going to go right back into my Morphe M514 and I'm going to kind of deepen up this outer V a little bit without going in with a deeper shade. Oh. She look pretty, she looks stunning. I've also really been loving the Stila Glitter Eyeshadows. This one is in the shade Kit and Karma. Now, I'm gonna try to implement this product into this look without going too crazy because as you can see, it is an extremely intense glitter liquid eyeshadow, which is really, really great when you're doing like intense looks. However, I do want this look to be a little bit more natural. So I'm going to apply this very sparingly onto the eyelid. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to brush some of it off of the brush. And then I'm just going to lightly tap it onto the lid. One of the main things I love about these liquid eyeshadows by Sila is that you could use it in the way that I just used it in this video, or you can apply it all over the lids just as a straight up eyeshadow and get something that looks a little a bit like this. Sometimes I'll do that if I want a really intense eye look, but today I am going for something a little bit more subtle, a little bit more glowy, kind of like glowing from within, which is why I applied it very, very sparingly. This is all I'm gonna do for eyeshadow. I'm now gonna move on to liner. I have been loving two eyeliners. The first one is a pencil eyeliner, and this is by Makeup Forever. This is the Aqua XL Extra Long Lasting Waterproof Eye Pencil in the shade M10. What I've been loving about this pencil is using it to tight line in my waterline. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tight line and I'm also going to apply it very, very messily on my lower lash line. After using that eyeliner, this is what your liner should look like. Very, very messy. No big deal. I am going to take a makeup wipe by Simple, which reminds me, these are also one of my favorites. These are the Simple Sensitive Skin Cleansing Facial Wipes. You guys know how much I love Simple Skincare. Ever since I partnered up with them last year, I still use their products till this day. Like even the Micellar Cleansing Water, bomb. But I'm going to use this and I'm just going to go ahead and wipe the very bottom layer away and the only thing that's going to be left is my tight line now that my tight line is done and ready to go i'm going to go in with gel eyeliner i have been loving the tarte clay pot in the shade black let me just say this has totally replaced my sigma wicked gel eyeliner and i know big big shocker but one thing i was realizing is that with my sigma wicked gel eyeliner i was putting that ferrous elite oil inside of the eyeliner and i think that's what was really causing my eyes to water so much so i recently switched over to this because it's extremely wet and creamy and it allows me to create a super precise line i've also been loving my mac 210 eyeliner brush my friend tanya from kiss and makeup put me onto this as well so shout out to tanya and i love it because it's super duper skinny so it allows me to get a super skinny line and recently i haven't been doing a wing which is a big shocker as well i just can't wing it out like i used to so i just do a really thin trace of eyeliner directly on top the liner should look a little something like this, and I know it looks so crazy, but at first I thought I was gonna do like no liner, but I really wanted to feature the Tarte Clay Pot, so I opted for liner. So now I'm gonna go in with a little bit more shadow. I'm gonna use a shade called Punk from the Born to Run palette, which is a really beautiful brown, and I'm gonna take it on a Morphe M507, which has also become one of my favorite brushes to apply eyeshadow with, and I'm going to pack the shade right here on the very outer corners, kind of pinching the eye a little bit to create more of a cat eye. So I'm only keeping it right here on the very outer corners. It's unreal. The Born to Run palette is definitely nothing to sleep on. Let me just say that. I'm gonna move on to mascara. I've become re-obsessed with the Maybelline Lash Sensational Mascara. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop her on. I remember, oh my God, this used to be like my go-to mascara. It definitely reminds me of like Benefit Roller Lash, but for like half the price but I'm using this to just coat my natural lashes because I will be applying falsies. 
what's new here? Nothing's new. So I did get a little bit of mascara on my lid, but I'll scrape it off once it's completely dry. I'm now gonna move on to my lashes. Now there is one pair of lashes that I have been so obsessed with recently, and they are by Blinking Beauty, and they are the Samantha Lash. I'm so obsessed with them. I literally just ordered three new pairs during their 4th of July sale. If you guys haven't tried out the Samantha Lash, I definitely recommend that you guys try her out. I also have another pair sitting right here. She's definitely a little bit on the U side, but I think I can make her work for the purpose of this video. I'm just gonna go ahead and sit her on top of my eyelashes on that liner. Like, do you see how beautiful she sits on the eye? She gets super small towards your inner corner and she kind of flares out towards the end, which makes it extremely beautiful whenever you're wearing like an extreme cat eye or something like that. I'm not gonna wing my eyeliner out just because I haven't really been into it. I've been really loving this look of just lining my upper lash line with one solid streak of liner. I will be using the Kiss Streak strip eyelash adhesive in dark. I absolutely love this eyelash adhesive. For so long, I was obsessed with the House of Lashes in dark, but this one you get at the drugstore, it's like six or $7. It's fairly, fairly inexpensive and it's easily accessible. I don't have to go online and order the House of Lashes one because in Sephora, it's like always sold out. By the way, you guys, this lash glue is also latex free. It is a lash glue that I keep in my freelance makeup kit as well because it's always good to have those latex free products like your sponges and your eyelash glue. So definitely a must. Now that I let my lash glue sit for maybe about 30 to 45 seconds, I'm just gonna go ahead and pop them on with some tweezers. So this right here is my final look with the lashes on. Once the lash glue is a little bit dry, I do like to kind of, you know, push them up a little bit just so that way they sit a little bit more lifted as opposed to like, er, like straight down. But overall, I am really, really obsessed with doing my makeup this way. And these are the products that I have been loving and using on a daily basis. For the most part, the eyes are almost done. I just have to do my lower lash line. But before I do that, I have to do the rest of the face. So I'm gonna move on to foundation. In the beginning of the video, you guys did see that I primed with my Smashbox primerizer and my Kevda Kwan beauty oil. So I'm gonna jump straight into stick foundation and to no surprise, I am using the Hourglass Vanish Stick Foundation. Lord, like I'm so obsessed with this. Like it's getting a little out of control, but I'm gonna take this and I'm just going to apply it to the face. I love the coverage of this foundation. Now I'm not gonna lie, it does get a little tricky to wear in the summer just because it's so hot and humid here in Florida that sometimes I feel like my whole face is melting off, but if I powder it down the right way, I can get it to stay in place all day long. And honestly, my face just looks so flawless whenever I wear this foundation. In addition to wearing this foundation, I'll also go in and mix in a little bit of the Dior Forever Undercover 24 Hour Full Coverage Foundation. I do have the shade 20 just because when I bought it, it was way too light for me, like way, way, way too light. And you guys know I'm not even all that dark. And sometimes I feel like this foundation in golden is just a tad bit too dark for me. So I do like to go in with a little bit more of a lighter foundation to kind of just mix the two together. And I just like the consistency of both of them on my skin. I feel like it just gives me a really beautiful flawless finish. I'm not entirely sure if I have expressed this to you guys, but I feel like all Dior foundations smell like cleaning supplies. Like it really, really does. But the coverage is beautiful. So we're gonna keep it going. We're gonna keep it moving. Like, do you guys see the way my skin looks? Flawless. Also, one of the main reasons I don't have an issue mixing in the Dior foundation is because it's such a weightless foundation that it literally feels like I'm wearing nothing throughout the day and it has 24 hour full coverage. I mean, no one wears their makeup for 24 hours, but it really gives me that really flawless effect for a long period of time. I cannot get over how flawless my face looks whenever I do that combination between the Dior and the Hourglass. I know it's really, really expensive, but I mean, it is what it is. I can't get this effect with any drugstore foundation, but for concealer, Too Faced Born This Way multi-use concealer definitely takes the cake. I did switch over to using natural beige. I know one of you guys were asking me what my updated shade was because the one I originally tried was vanilla and it was like way, way, way too light. So I have officially switched over to using natural beige. 
And I know what you're thinking, this honestly looks like the same color as my skin tone and that is exactly right. The reason I have been liking to use a concealer that is around the same shade as my skin tone is because I will go in with a brightening powder directly afterwards. So I don't want it to be like too, too bright. So I do like to use this concealer that is relatively close to my skin tone. To set underneath my eyes, you guys know I have been loving the Set the Stage Ultra Fine Loose Powder in the shade Porcelain Ivory. Fun fact, this isn't a true under the eye setting powder. It is in fact an all over the face powder, which is why it does have the shade Porcelain Ivory, but I don't get any flashback with this powder, which is really, really great. So that's why I'm using it to set directly underneath the eyes, and I'm not baking with this product. I'm really just pushing that powder onto the concealer to really just set it into place and I'm not leaving the powder there at all. I'm really just concentrating it underneath the eyes until I don't see any more of that powder. I'm also taking this powder and I'm really pushing it towards the very sides of my nose because honestly this is an area that I tend to get super oily throughout the day. So I really just want to set it all down and in place and I do find that this powder keeps me extremely matte which I love. For my actual face powder, you guys know, like you know hands down, in almost every single one of my videos, I would always ask you guys to recommend a good powder, whether it was drugstore or high end, and so many of you recommended the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Finish Skin Perfecting Micro Powder. I do have two different shades. I have one and I also have two. I do wanna get three for those months where I'm like a little bit darker, but for the most part, I do like to use shade one, which is a relatively light lighter shade right here directly underneath my eyes to really brighten and highlight, which is why I did not go in with a lighter concealer because I noticed whenever I would use a super light concealer paired with this powder, it would just be way too bright. So I do essentially brighten with a lighter powder like this one. One thing I absolutely love about this powder is that it literally sits so flawlessly on the skin. It's almost like silk. It's literally like butter. Like it looks so pretty and instantly you can see just how much shade one brightened underneath my eye which like I said is why I don't go in with a lighter concealer whenever I'm working with this powder. I went ahead and switched to a more fluffy brush just so that way I could bring it out a little bit further but as I was saying one thing I really like about this product is that it's infused with rose wax and almond oil so it's really going to hydrate the skin giving you more of a luminous finish. It's also not going to look dry or cakey or anything like that underneath the eyes which I think is amazing so after putting this directly underneath my eyes I will just take a little bit and dust it onto my chin and also the center of my forehead to just highlight it a little bit I feel like this is a really pretty subtle way of highlighting without having to go in with a ton of light concealer we're now gonna move on to bronzer because after foundation and powder, you tend to lose dimension in your face in the process. So one bronzer I have been loving is Hula Light by Benefit. And I know what you guys are thinking, how do I wear Hula Light? Well, pretty much what I do is I take it on a MAC 135 brush like this and I'll dip it into the powder and I'll use it as a transition color for my bronzer. And, it's, and I know it sounds weird, but I feel like my bronzer just blends a little bit more seamless and effortlessly when I do apply it this way. So I like to take Hoola and I'll apply it almost all over my forehead and then I'll bring it down right in this area to bronze. And as you can see, it adds a little bit of color. It's not too overpowering. It's not too overwhelming, which I like. And I'll just continue to really just blow out this color before I go in and actually bronze. After applying Hoola Light, I will go in with my actual bronzer shade, which is NARS Laguna. And you can just tell that this has been a longtime favorite of mine. Like, it literally has. I'm gonna go in with a little bit more of a concentrated brush like this. This is by Smashbox. This is the angled blush brush, but I'm gonna use it to actually contour. So I'm gonna pick up a little bit of that powder and I'm just gonna go ahead and stamp it closest to the hairline just to bring a little bit more warmth back into my look. Once I have the product stamped, I'm just gonna go back and forth to really just blend. The contour. Once I have my bronzer in place, I'm just gonna go in with my powder brush that I use to set down my whole face and really just work everything together just so that way I don't have any harsh lines. It's all about the blend, people. All about that blend. Okay, face. You see me, face. 
flawless face. <laughs> Anyways, let's move back down to the lower lash line just so that way I can kind of zoom out and we can finish off the rest of the look. I'm gonna pick up a little bit more of Riff from the Born This Way palette and I'm gonna take it on a flat definer brush by Sigma and I'm simply just going to press this closest to that lash line, running my brush back and forth to really just get that color down there on the lash line. This is really just gonna bring the whole entire look together. Then with a Morphe M321, I'm gonna pick up a little bit more riff and I'm just going to really blow out this lower lash line so that way it's nice and smoky. I can't tell you how obsessed I am with this look. Like it's unreal how obsessed I have been with all of these products. Like it's so easy for me to kind of like do a look super quick. Granted, this video isn't like taking me like 10 minutes. Like it's taking me a minute to film this just because I am explaining it but like I have never had a set routine with like set products that I'm like so in love with and so obsessed with in a really long time. So I'm glad that I kind of have like these go-to favorites that I know are gonna work anytime I do my makeup. Now that we have that brown in place, I'm gonna take a brush like this, which is a smudge E21, and I'm gonna pick up a little bit of the shade called Jet from the Born This Way palette. And what I'm gonna do with Jet is I'm gonna set down my waterline, the eyeliner we put in our waterline like a few steps back to really set that baby in place so that way she doesn't move or smudge or budge throughout the day. Then with just a little bit of the shade called Punk, which is a dark brown in the palette, I'm just gonna buff her right here closest to that black in the waterline to really just bring everything together. We're gonna finish off the eyes with another one of my favorites, which is the MAC Extended Play Giga Black Lash Mascara. One of the main reasons I love this, especially for my bottom lashes, is because the wand is so extremely small, so it's super easy for me to get up close and personal and really coat my lower lashes. Whenever I use a mascara, a mascara, Whenever I use a mascara with an extremely thick or fat wand, I always get mascara everywhere on my lower lash line, but I find that that does not happen when I use this guy. The eyes are finally done. I'm now gonna move back down to the face and we're gonna talk about highlighter. My go-to favorite highlighter right now is the Fenty Beauty Kilowatt Highlighter in the shade Me Money and Hustle Baby. Like, can we just take a moment? Can we talk about it? Like, look, look at how destroyed this highlighter is like she's extremely beautiful so what i like to do with this guys i like to take a little bit of mean money on a brush i'm just going to use the same one i use to set underneath my eyes since i'm done setting underneath my eyes and i'm going to pop her right here on the apples of my cheeks and the reason i'm doing this is because when i smile i really want this to be the highlighted space on my face and this is an illuminating powder but it doesn't have shimmer or anything like that in it so it's not going to accentuate any texture or anything like that on the face like it looks extremely beautiful popped right here on the very apples of the cheeks because it's going to highlight but it's not going to add shimmer or chunky glitter or anything like that so after popping this product on the apples of my cheeks i do like to go into hustle baby which is the highlight shade the shimmery highlight in this highlight and as you can see she's like all gone like because I used her all up so I had to go out and purchase a brand new one to get this shade right here I know I'm crazy like I love it that much so I'm gonna take Hustle Baby on that same brush and I'm gonna pop her and sweep her right here and I am using a brush like this just because I don't want like a heavy streak of highlight I've been really into highlighting this way just because it does give me a more diffuse highlight as opposed to a very streak of highlight that is very very obvious and noticeable i really want my highlight to be popping but i don't want to look like crazy in the process so that's why i have switched to highlighting this way my favorite blushes hands down have to go to flower beauty and pb4 and also pb2 you guys have seen me do this kind of duo combination mixed together on my channel and i love it so i'm going to take a little bit of pb2 which is a little bit more of a peachy tone blush and I'm going to pop her onto my cheeks. Then I'll top it off with a little bit of PB4. And the reason I do this is because PB4 has the most insanely beautiful sheen to it. So it almost looks like my cheeks are like glowing. Like, and I'm obsessed with the way that this combination of blush just works for me personally. And I don't know, it's just something I've been using and doing 
almost every day. I do have two lip favorites to share with you. The first one is kind of like a lip combo, and I have been obsessed with this lipstick by Urban Decay in the shade Fuel. It did come out with their Naked Heat collection last year, and I have been using it nonstop ever since. Like, she gets a lot of love, and she is an extremely beautiful, warm tone nude that I am all here for. I am all about. It's not an extremely matte lipstick. It is a cream lipstick, so it does have a little bit of sheen to it. It definitely is a movable formula, which I love. So this is what Fuel looks like. It does look really, really beautiful paired with the gloss. And a gloss that I have been loving to pair it with is this one by Kathleen Lights in collaboration with ColourPop. And it is in the shade Moon Child. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pop a little bit of this over top. Seriously, how beautiful is this lip combo? I'm here for it, like, what's up? My last lip favorite, but most certainly not least, is another ColourPop lippy. This is their Ultra Satin Lip in collaboration with I Love Seta E in the shade Arriba. Like, honestly, I feel like if I'm going to wear color on my lips it's gonna be red and this one has just been a staple for me like it is so pretty and I absolutely love the formula of ColourPop ultra satin lips they're matte but they're not extremely matte they're extremely movable like my lips don't feel like they're about to crust off which is amazing which is why I do love the formula of ColourPop ultra satin lips so much so this right here is the lip color in Arriba I am so obsessed with it whoa 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 um but in all seriousness if i'm going to wear a red this is the red that i gravitate towards i really do love ultra satin lips by ColourPop. if you guys haven't tried them definitely check them out i have everything linked down below in fact i'll have all of my favorites linked down below and just like that you guys this is pretty much it for my get ready with me favorites video full face of favorites whatever it is that you guys want to call it let me know what you guys thought in the comments down below and if you guys like these kind of like full face using my favorite products let me know in the comments down below and i'll definitely film more videos like this in the future i can't guarantee that i'm gonna have a full face of favorites like i did in this video just because i don't think it's humanly possible to have a full face of favorites every single month but i'll try my very best to film favorites videos from here on out if in fact you guys do want to see them on my channel if you guys still are not subscribed to my channel be sure to press that subscribe button and also don't forget to click Click the notification bell so that way you guys are notified anytime I upload, which is three times a week, Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday at 9 a.m. And trust me when I tell you, you don't want to miss out on it. So subscribe. And with that, guys, I don't think I have much else to say except I love you. Thank you guys so much for watching. And until next time, I'll be sure to catch you guys all on the next one. Deuces. Was it what you thought it was? What are you doing? I mean, I'm sorry to tell you. What are you doing? Why? Come on, do I look pretty? Beautiful. I look beautiful? Wow, I finally made it to the very end of the video. Honestly, I'm so glad it's over, and I know you guys are glad as well. Well, maybe you're not glad it's over. Odds are, if you made it to the end of the video, then you want to press the subscribe button right here, and you want to keep it going. Watch some of my other videos, like this one or this one. Like, take your pick. They're both pretty good, and I don't have much else to say except goodbye.